All right, in this little video, I'm going to show you how to color in an image template in Google Slides using two tools, the polyline and the fill color. So strap yourselves in. It's going to be a wild ride. No, nah, I'm just kidding. It's really going to be pretty easy. So let's get started. Okay, so once you have the image that you're going to be coloring in, you want to insert it as the background, not as a separate actual image that can move around, but a background that stays in one place. So in your toolbar, find the slide option. When you click on slide, the drop down menu will appear and you pick change background. From there, choose image. Now, depending on where you saved the image to, you might have to upload it, you might be taking a picture of it with your camera, whatever your choice, make the correct one from the top of this pop-up menu, and then insert that image as your background. All right, so as long as the image you chose isn't really bizarrely shaped, like a rubber band pulled too far out in either direction, um, or if it's incredibly, incredibly small, um, otherwise you're really not going to have to worry much about uh, image distortion or anything. Um, here, with my background image, it popped up uh, pretty much exactly as I found it. So our next step is going to be doing the coloring. Well, there is no way to just sort of freehand color in a Google slide. But this method is really not only the next best thing, but I actually, in a way, think it's even better. Um, in a way, it's, I think it's faster and more efficient than uh, doing like a freehand color in. And we're going to be doing this using polylines. And I'm going to explain what that means as we do this. But um, just down to the basics here, if you look up where I have circled, you'll see the insert line tool. And you're going to want to select the little arrow on the right-hand side of that tool that's pointing downwards. It's going to open up a drop-down menu for you. From that drop-down menu, you're going to select Polyline. What this lets you do is to create a, a line, duh, uh, but with all sorts of different points where the line can radiate out uh, at different angles. Really what this means is you can make this line bend and curve the way you want to by just applying slight variations on where you want one line to end and the next line to begin. And no matter how many little join together line segments you have, you want to eventually get that line back to its original starting point and it will make a shape based on the contours of the line that you outlined for it. I know that sounds really complicated, but just watch it in action and I think you'll see it's a pretty simple procedure. So I'm going to start here by using the polyline tool to trace an outline of the banner at the top part of the page. And you do not want to cross any lines on any of the images. So you don't want to have the shape that you're about to create overlay and cover part of any line that already exists in your blank template. Right? You want the images you're going to make and the colors you're going to produce to accurately represent what's already on the page. Right? So as your first grade teacher always told you, you got to color in the lines. You got to color in the lines. So watch how I'm going to use the polyline tool to outline the shape of the left hand part of the banner. And notice every time, click, click, it creates a new click point on my polyline and when it comes together it forms a shape. I can now go and fill color and change whatever color that I want that shape to be. You just need to remember, especially when you get to the small parts, to stay within the lines. You don't want to block any of the original image, you just want to enhance it by adding color and dimension. 
And what happens if you didn't do a perfect job, if it doesn't quite line up? Well, you can right-click or two-finger click on the shape and select Edit Points, and you can move those points where you clicked to create the shape. You can move them around subtly to fill in exactly where you need them to fill in, just as you can see here in the video. All right. And when I zoom out again, you'll see that it's fixed. So now I can continue making the rest of my banner, and sometimes it's an easy job, like following this little rectangle here. All right, remember, click down on the mouse to lay down a point, and when it fills in, you can change the color and adjust as need be. Uh, make sure to zoom in if you need to. And you can see as I continue here, I've filled in a, a color uh, for the middle of the banner, and I can adjust the line weight on the edge. I can fill in the small gaps. And in just a moment, as I continue to click on point, 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 and connect it all together to make one solid shape, then go up to the fill color and change that to match whatever I want it to be. Now that I'm going to start working on more detailed finicky areas uh, involving going around the shape of the sword, I want to make sure that I zoom in and that when I'm making my polyline, if I'm just doing a straight line like I am here on the edge of the banner, then I can just one or two little points. But as I start to go around a corner, I need to make sure that I'm making multiple clicks, multiple points of contact, um, slightly changing the angle and vector of my line so that I can make it appear to curve around. Remember, they're all straight lines, but you hit enough points on a straight line, and when you zoom out, it's going to look like a curve. You can see how I'm doing point after point after point after point, and going around slightly, and then making my way around the edge until that polyline matches up to where I started. And now I can change the color, and you can see that part of my banner is now colored red, but the sword remains intact for me to work on next. So as I zoom back out to check, I can always see if I want to adjust my polyline. Right? I can right-click or two-finger click if you have a trackpad that does that. And I can adjust these different points on my polyline to slightly change the shape uh, if I need to go back and refine or I make a different decision as to uh, where exactly that shape is going to come in relation to here, like to the sword hilt. Right, so I've got uh, the opportunity to always go back in and slightly change and alter the shape that I've created using the polyline tool. Just remember to zoom in. Now we're going to do another really finicky bit, the, the pommel and part of the hilt of the sword. And you can see I'm going to create another polyline, and part of it's going to be on top of the last one I made. But that's okay. You can put line after line after line. Uh, Notice I'm clicking to make a lot of different connection points to make the real angle around the hilt. And I'm going to use a gradient tool so that it looks more like a burnished metal. A uh, gradient, rather than a, a solid color, sort of has a mild transition, a lighter to a darker side. It almost looks like a, a reflective sort of surface. You can kind of see. Um, and as I continue around the hilt, here, uh, the part of the pommel of the sword, I'm going to continue to use a gradient color. I can continue to zoom out and zoom in to make sure the color looks great. And here I'm going to continue on a little bit, skip ahead. I've finished the hilt of the sword. Now I'm going to work on the blade itself. And remember, if there's a line in the original, don't cover it. Right? Your point here is to color in, not color over. So here I am, going to use a gradient tool again, a nice gray, um, really make the blade uh, look like it's made of metal. I'm going to do it to one side, then I'm going to create a polyline and do it on the second side. And if I do say so myself, that's a good looking sword. And remember, if you want to change the color of one of the polyline shapes that you created, it's as easy as 
uh, two finger clicking or, or right clicking on the shape and going back up to the fill color and changing the color. Like here, I've decided to make the banner green. So I think you have the basic idea now. Um, I'm going to skip ahead and show you uh, a completed version that I did. So three, two, one, bam! Now that is a good looking crest. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's how you can turn a blank black and white template into a colored in coloring book style document just using polylines and fill colors. All right, enjoy.